Good evening. Hopefully everybody is doing okay. Hopefully everybody can see me. I do have a couple laptops open, so I won't lose chat tonight. Um, we're going to talk about managed payments. We'll talk about the search issues. Um, I've got some news on Amazon probably coming out tomorrow for those who do Amazon. Um, geez, we're going to touch on a bunch of topics here. Uh, I know people have had issues and such forth as well. No, I've got new lights today. I literally just set them up before the show, so I may not have it exactly right. So if it looks a little off, it shouldn't look this way after um, after uh, tonight. Again, I didn't have much time to fix it. Uh, let me make sure every setting's correct. Looks like we are streaming okay. Hey, Duncan, how are you doing? Did you list the 50,000 military? No, I haven't listed any of them yet. We are putting a book together, so until I get everything sorted on which ones we're going to uh, hang on to for a little while, I'm not listing any of them right now. Um, I'll be listing like, I think, six or 700 of them uh, at the end of August, uh, going in for fourth quarter. And that should be enough to get me all my money back, in all honesty, from what we figured out. Um, there's like Rev War ones in there that are a couple hundred apiece. There's some, you know, Civil War ones and things like that, too. So there's a lot of money in that kind of thing. Uh, just had another unpaid cancellation. eBay says they are going to refund. eBay needs to fix some of this stuff. Another unpaid cancellation. Unpaid cancellation. So what would you be billed for? Are you saying refunding on your fees for listing? I'm not sure what you're, what you're, they're refunding you for. If it was canceled and not paid for, nothing would be ex ex uh, assessed onto your account if you're under managed payments, or I think even if not, until it's actually paid for, other than the listing fees themselves. Kathy's busy. That sounds good. At least she's got some stuff coming in. Is PayPal down at the moment anyway? I just went through PayPal like maybe 40 minutes ago. I haven't seen anything wrong with PayPal at all. I don't have issues with PayPal, though. They've actually saved me on two occasions where somebody pulled money out of... They made a fake dummy of my charge card or my, my PayPal card, and then they caught it immediately, like in the middle of the night even, and then they shut it down like immediately. They even gave me my money back before anything was even investigated, which I was really surprised. Yeah, it looks like the light may be a hair off. We'll have to play around with the light. Uh, let's see here. Hustle and Grind Calgary, how are you doing tonight? eBay couldn't verify my bank info three times. To get your bank uh, info verified, I literally logged in to my bank through the eBay link that they have, and it instantly connected. I had the same failures, and then I saw a page that said, you know, direct link and then boom it was perfect it instantly fixed the issue the minute i did it that way you know no big deal they got the information anyway you know i do that for my you know local taxes and things like that too you know it's just just the way it works uh same info uh each time and the fourth time it worked hmm. ebay is so incompetent now I've I've been on so we've been doing managed payments on everything both accounts are managed payments. The one that just turned on it was flawless. I had no issues whatsoever from it going from the regular old way to the new way. It's basically them turning on something at, at, as the basics of it. You know, at one specific minute or one specific second this thing starts and then it moves the services through there. It's not a huge complex process i would say by this point because they've been doing this for a year now this is a year into the the program that they set this up now in all honesty i personally think that um sales actually have increased since it turned on believe it or not i'm kind of surprised it, it could be a lark i'll have to play it by ear and see what happens but every day since this happened i've gotten a little more business than i had for the two weeks before now we're up so you know either way it doesn't matter to me but you know I don't see any drawbacks at this point. Now, I've checked every payment because they're sending them every night. Why they do that, I don't know. But every night the payment comes in. I guess I could change that, but I haven't worried about it. So I verified every payment down the list. I checked, you know, what should have been collected, what was collected, you know, the fees, every little aspect of each one of those, those listings. So it looks correct. 
I don't have any issues. I dug into it because, you know, I'm, I'm not very trusting of eBay to begin with, with some of the things they've done. But in, in all honesty, I can't find anything wrong at this point with managed payments. I'm glad I waited. I sure as heck am glad I'm waited, but I'm glad I did it now as opposed to running into fourth quarter and them just not having issues or the banks don't link up or something. I, I wasn't going to take a chance, you know, so I, I'm, I just went ahead and did it. You know, I guess I could have argued some or something. I don't know. Not a big ordeal at this point. So, but yes, uh, Hustle and Grind Calgary, they do uh, show incompetence in many things they do. The searches. Now, I had some people, you know, say, you know, I'm stupid. It's it's a waste of time. That means nothing. Those searches with them showing specific categories over others. Pay attention to that. I'm I'm seriously telling you that that could affect your 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 views like 30 40 percent it's not some fictitious thing for those of of you who don't think it's anything to worry about look up some yourself and i know some of these have been doing this for a long time i i say that in the video as well this has been going on i've just never spent the time to dig in to see how vast it is and what the differences are but after i lay out the math the differences between you know what's shown what isn't shown on the initial search it's they're terrible numbers and especially with that many new people online because of the pandemic it's further probably limiting it because these people who have never used ebay and now jumping in on ebay are probably just going to go with the numbers that ebay gives them the category that they give them and like on my phone i got to click like three things to figure out what category i'm looking at just to begin with and a lot of people just don't know you know what to bop around on their app and the phone and things like that so it's probably a pretty high number. One in four people on average for some items may never see your listing because they're not realizing that the category that you're listing in isn't the one that eBay happens to be showing for a specific search result. Um, to me, that's that's just as bad as the promoted listings when you were being hidden you know, by you know, ad blockers. And again, they're still being hidden by ad blockers, but it's the same basic principle. They're intentionally doing this, though, for the wrong reason. They don't realize, in my book, again, incompetence, they don't realize, in my book, my opinion, uh, that they're limiting the amount of people that will see things just by that factor. 25% is a pretty huge number. 10% is a pretty good number. If you're getting tens of thousands of views, you're talking thousands of views that you wouldn't get just over a 10% matter. You know, what if what if you would get 100,000 views and 20% of those aren't, looking at your items so 20,000 if that's the case a month maybe missing your items because they're not centering in or not realizing they're stuck in a specific category even if they go and change it from best match which is what ebay gives you to newest which is what most people want to know they want to get the one that just popped up hopefully at the cheapest price it still keeps them in that same category so it defeats the purpose and again people don't always look you got high percentages of people doing this from a phone nowadays more so now than ever with the pandemic so it's it's a major issue in my honest opinion i really think that it's something that ebay should definitely change i really think this is detrimental to many people's businesses because there are so many categories that you can sell in the same item and still garner, you know, money off of it. Like if I'm, we're going back to the buttons for Duncan's comment here. If I'm going to list buttons, there's two categories that eBay literally has that buttons can go in. Now, one says a certain date, one says another. It usually doesn't play that way when people list these things. There's one in antiques under sewing section there, 1930s and before. Again, if it's a Victorian military button, you'll see those in there as well, too. The other ones that eBay will steer you to when you look for them is specifically collectibles, militaria, and then based by the year or if it's World War One, World War Two, it goes in there. And then it's personal um, accoutrements is what it goes under basically for buttons. I think there is a button category in like Civil War and a few of the other ones if my, my memory doesn't escape me on that. So it's putting everybody into the one specific category, even though they openly have another category. Just because it's a military button doesn't mean it shouldn't go or couldn't go into the antiques section for sewing buttons pre-1930. I know that may be a long about way to explain it, but you're limiting a whole bunch. And just like with that kind of search in the one on the antiques collectible section, there could be hundreds of them. There could be a thousand of them there that people are listing because they're button people and they know their antique buttons and they think that they would assume that's where they went because again, that's where most of that kind of stuff went through the time changes of eBay. I mean, eBay used to have that as the category for buttons in general. 
and they've moved them around here, they moved them around there, they've separated them and, and stuff like that. And I think there's actually a textile sewing section under collectibles too that people list buttons in, if I'm not mistaken, as well too. Uh, so I mean, they shouldn't narrow down a search and tell people, this is what you're looking for. These are your results. It even says best match. So they're going to think, oh, this is the best stuff for me. It's misleading at the best. At the best case scenario, it's misleading. Worst case, it's it's deceiving to them because they're missing out on many things. It's annoying for those who look for certain kinds of collectibles. And I've talked to a lot or heavy and they look every single day. They don't care what category it's in because people don't always list or know what they're listing. So they don't know where to list it to begin with in, in some cases. And it's going to steer them by keyword alone into a specific category and lock out everything else. And you could be missing stuff. Again, that's a, a perfect example. And on top of that, it's always showing best match. Every classic toy collector or collector of almost anything wants to know what just went up. The newest first. The newest first. It used to do that. It's annoying that they do these totally unthought-out plans and instigated it site-wide and don't tell anybody that your stuff isn't showing up on your first search results unless it's only in that one category. And I want to say this again because I've had several people say, no, 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 don't worry about it. They'll look up the comp price. And I've had a bunch of people say this and they'll list it as a cell similar for whatever the comp item was. Now, you don't know what the search results were showing at that time. You don't know if that's the one that shows up. And if you're going back farther than 90 days, if there's by means some way that you can do that, you're definitely not going to be what's currently showing up would be my guess. Those categories they show could fluctuate too based on how many are listed in one category or how many are sold in one category versus how many are sold in another category. That's a standard like logarithm that's... Um, use for apps in general to figure out things it can tell when the percentage goes over 50 point whatever 50.01 or if it's under you know 50 49.99 it'll drop it down and that won't be the key category anymore it may be something as simple as that as a percentage who knows what that that determining factor is but they had to have figured out well they i shouldn't say that with ebay but they should have put in a mechanism that would automatically change that category. It's probably the same basic thing when you look at your uh, year over last in your, your seller hub. When you look in seller hub, you'll see, I don't know where everybody has it because you can move all those blocks around. Mine I have up on the far top right, the um, year over last, how I'm comparing to my sales versus last month to this month and last year to this year. Those numbers are based on your top two selling categories. So my guess is it would work the same way for what they're showing for those search results. So whatever's top top one in that one, whichever one sells more, that's probably the one they're selling it. My guess is they're using the same basic, um, I guess what you would say, code to, to do both of those functions. Because it's basically the same function. It figures out the percentage and boom, that's what, what shows up. So I'm sure it's like a cut and paste and that's what they're using. That'd be my guess. Just I've seen so many programmers and what they write out. I took programming, so, you know, I've seen enough, and we had to do it ourselves, and, and cut and paste is what a lot of people do. Nothing wrong with doing that if you're doing repetitive actions. Nesting and cut and paste, that's what coding really is. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Charles, how you doing this evening? Hustle and Grind Calgary saying PayPal is down. Yeah, I don't transfer money very often, so I wait till there's a bunch in there and do it. With the new managed payments and all, you've got several options too. Now, this was another question I, I think I should make sure I, I call out. I had a bunch of people ask, well, how do you pay if you're not getting your funds into PayPal? You've got different options you can use, so you don't just have to use PayPal to pay your, your uh, shipping. I just use PayPal anyway. You know, I don't care. I got money going into PayPal from other uh, revenue streams besides just um, eBay. So it doesn't really matter to me. Money's always coming into that account, you know. So I, one thing I've said, if you're managed payments, you need to have a bank account first off. You should have one anyway. Set yourself up at least one business account. Our banks are free. I can have two or three. We have two or three, I should say. We have two or three bank accounts from the same bank, and they were all free because they're business accounts. Now, we keep a certain amount of money in each one. Excuse me, soda. I, we keep a certain amount of money in there. I don't know if there's a limit or what, but they've never given me a hassle. I don't pay a fee for any of those. You know, I, I have to buy checks if I'm going to use checks on one of those accounts. But 
get a couple accounts. Get one to hold money in for your taxes or whatever the case may be if you're not paying them in advance. Um, one plus I have heard, and I can see it, is for those who don't, don't aren't business suave yet, uh, they don't have it down yet, nothing wrong, everybody takes time to learn, it's easier for you not to get behind or mess up when they're paying your bills on a daily basis. It, it is. I have to say, for those I've talked to who are new, it, it's been a savior so that it's one less thing for them to have to worry about. Now, I'm not trying to beef up eBay at all. I'm just giving you the honest facts of it. It, it, it is easier for those I've talked to. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm trying not to look at it from my side because... Everybody isn't in my spot, obviously. So for the average seller out there, it will be easier in my book. You could probably do your own taxes if you are not, if you're a small-time seller, a smaller-time seller. Nothing wrong with that. It takes time to get anywhere with doing this. So, you know, managed payments isn't the evil to end all. I will pay more. I, I could almost guarantee you that the way it's looking, too. If they keep giving the free listings, though, or the, the 50000 75000 whatever they're going to keep on doing with that, I'm going to be fine with the increased fees because I will still be saving over and above because I ain't paying the, I ain't, I'm not paying the 10,000, um, anything over 10,000 anymore, you know, when they're giving away the extra listings. And from what I see, they are still going to continue doing it. If they're smart, they would just keep up, give everybody, you know, so many free listings and then just end it at that. Like they have an England, um, UK site. And I know there's a couple folks probably in here. The UK site, you can, um, Hang on just a second here. I'm sorry. I just forgot to do something, and I think we're clogging up some system here. Maybe not. Um, for those in Patreon, I've got a video that's uploading or will be uploaded, I guess. I guess I didn't start it yet. Um, we'll be uploading to uh, Patreon tonight. It's all done. It. I promise you it'll be up tonight. I'll be looking at emails probably tomorrow morning at the very latest. I might have time to do it tonight, depending on how long we, we go on tonight. Um, managed payments, I've gotten flooded with this, a lot of stuff in managed payments. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to tell you that. Look at it from a business uh, pers uh, perspective. Don't look at it from anything else. I know eBay, you can say is evil or whatever the case may be. Most of the companies, you know, you could say that about in all honesty. I'm not just out to get everybody's money in any way, shape, or form on eBay or anywhere else. That's not my driving factor it's it's the freedom to be able to do what I want when I want, how I want to do it, and not have to have some boss who hasn't a clue. I wouldn't want to work for eBay knowing all the stuff they do. That's that's the example I guess I could give you there. I, I get the feelings, but this is business. There, there, You have to draw the line between business and what you personally feel, your, your personal aspect of it. Do a pros and cons if you got to for something like that. But it's, it's business to me, as I will tell everybody else. I see a lot of people saying they're not going to do eBay anymore. That's your decision. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way either, if that's what you personally feel you have to do. We're vested in, in eBay. And as I've said, we're, we'll go down, not with the ship, but we'll, we'll wait till the last nail is about hammered into the coffin and we're not making any money before we'll jump ship on a platform, any platform. Um, Poshmark, we, weren't making, we were making a profit, but I just didn't like the whole aspect of it. And if I don't like it, it becomes a drag pretty much immediately, and it, it kills the it kills the whole thing for me. Just like clothing. I, I hated clothing. It, it's monotonous. It's return rates are high. You can miss. I don't know how many times I, I spent my time looking at the store, and then we find a little spot or something. And I would never want to slip even a tiny little spot. If you ever watched Seinfeld, like George with the sweater, I think he gave away some really expensive sweater and had a little tiny red dot on it. Um, he was trying to be cheap in, in what would have been a nice sweater had that dot on it, and I wouldn't want some little tiny red dot on my sweater. So anyway, that, that's the point on that. Uh, you, you can't fight it unless you just don't want to be on eBay. That That's the bottom line. Um, again, I don't care for those running the company and my opinions on, on the folks running it now I've given many times um, but the site the site eBay itself the the structure what it is what it does is still good it still has the the inner workings of what it used to be to some extent I still make good money I still sell things that would only sell for those kind of prices on eBay by the sheer draw of the site you know in itself um, it helps that I've been on and I know where eBay's come from and 
we've had basically as an adult almost a lifelong adult experience with eBay so it, it means more to me than probably most people because it's always saved us in, in the long run even when we were working full-time for somebody else for you know that was our business if we ever needed extra money eBay was always there I mean always I don't think there was a time when we were in dire need that we weren't able to put something up on eBay and make money and came out okay we have floated our life since eBay has been around you know covering any needed expense buying a car whatever it came came time to get money we were always able to do it with eBay I can't I can't just throw that aside because for the last you know two three years we've had idiots five years there's just been people who don't have a clue the structure is there somebody somebody who's intelligent enough to understand the whole thing on what's going on and what they're doing wrong comes in there it could turn around you know on the drop of a dime if they they know what they're doing and again I'd never ever want to work for any of those type of people in my life again and that's the the driving factor for doing this again managed payments just another one of those bumps in the road I'm not happy about it I still I lost hundreds more listings and any kind of to uh, token coin even wooden nickels even souvenirs because it had the word nickel and I guess I don't know even stuff that wasn't even listed in that specific category were yanked down the minute that they activated managed payments now I kind of figured I wasn't going to take them down though Figured if they want them gone, they can take them down. It's a lot of work to take down a couple hundred listings one by one, or even if I'm taking them down in a lot through the edit feature on you know the listings page and hub. Either way, you know we're moving forward. You know there'll be probably another category would be my guess that that um, will be yanked. I had a couple people now, two different people tell me, and it's probably in one of the feeds down there, one of the comment sections, that they sell multivitamins and things like that, and they pull down every one of their listings pretty much. Two different people. They don't know each other. These are unrelated people, unrelated accounts. So, you know, they're going after some other things for whatever reason they are. Vitamins is one of those categories that there's no real, uh, I guess, inspection of them. There's no government testing they don't have to go through the FDA for the most part most of those sorts there's nothing to back up any of the claims so vitamins is an area that's a little iffy some of them there are of course so you know I'm not saying all vitamins are bad don't get me wrong we have vitamins in the house so let's hop on over here and see where we're going I got asked to join managed payments as a dunk and I stated that uh, I lived in Australia but list on foreign eBay site eBay UK and they don't support sellers doing that eBay then told me I am right and that I didn't have to join they haven't developed it for listing directly onto international sites now my guess is once they have UK on managed payments and Australia on managed payments at that point those should be integratable meaning that if you're on managed payments on one country it's going to be the basic same thing and you should be able to do it that way the only thing I don't know switching over to managed payments is if my logins that I have currently which I pay basically through the US site will still work on the foreign sites that we buy stuff on like toys and, and weebles and stuff on because I buy a lot from the, the French site we bought something from Spain the other day um, it's been stuck in customs since the 13th mind you so we'll play it by ear not in a hurry to get it so I'm not a very impatient person I can wait for something uh, let's see here hey Penny how are you doing this evening hopefully you are doing well uh, hang on just a minute here this feeds not going too bad uh, I don't want to miss anybody hey Daryl how are you doing this evening Daryl Denver North Carolina Gail right below how you doing Gail Luan, how are you doing? Huntsbury, nice name. Sarasota, we used to live in um, in um, uh, Claremont area, Florida, and my uncle lived in Sarasota, St. Pete. He lived just off Alternate 19. We used to stay at, what's it, the Sand Dollar Hotel or Motel on um, Alternate 19, just uh, north of Safety Harbor area. We loved going to Louis Pappas's, uh, the Greek restaurant down there in uh, Tarpon Springs. Loved walking the docks and the antique stores there used to be wonderful. No idea how they are now, but I loved that area. Kikino Beach, um, Honeymoon Island, Crystal Law Waters. How are you doing this evening? Good to see you. And I got Bob right down below. Uh, is there still a bad echo that I am missing here somewhere? 
I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Bad echo. Where am I getting an echo from? Oh, am I still getting an echo? Let me pop down to the bottom to see. Hey, Carl, thank you very kindly for that. I do honestly and sincerely appreciate that super chat, Carl. If somebody, not to change it off Carl for a second, but if, if I'm still getting um, an echo, is there an echo, anybody? Nobody? Echo, no echo, echo gone. Yeah, thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, hit the thumbs up if you haven't hit it. I'm running at 182 from my side right now, and we got 59 likes so far. Thank you very kindly. I'm going to pop back up on the feed here just so I don't miss anybody. I see Annie's in the house, too. Annie's got a lot of good videos out if you get a chance. Now, unfortunately, you can't do that little three dots there, but um, if you want to pop out your, your uh, page, Annie, you're more than welcome to. Uh, hang on just a second here. Where am I at? Okay, Crystal, Bob, Daryl, there's the echo. Marikex, uh, Marikex 7, how are you doing this evening? CJ, good to see you in here this evening. Yeah, I think I must have had a button clicked. Uh, just a theory, but I don't think they can force everyone into managed payments. Yeah, I would say they probably can because it's their site. It's not a... My dog's down here already. It's not a public entity. They can do what they want with how they collect their own money. Um, they they literally, I saw a, a post the other day. Somebody sent me a copy. I did read it. It does say that they plan by the end of 2021, everybody will be on managed payments. Everybody. There's no ifs, ands, or buts from what they are saying. It would, it would be no way practical to have two systems. It would be more trouble than it was worth just by sheer you know mechanics of it you know logistics wise of course one and one alone again thank you very nicely uh, for that carl i do appreciate that sincerely um flipopolis how are you doing this evening treasure experts right below hey eduardo how are you doing this evening there will be as i said if you just missed it there will be a patreon video up still tonight we're going to go look at Shopify in that video, and then I'm going to discuss some other quick updates and talk more about Shopify. I've got a lot more questions on Shopify, so um, CSV file I'll be working on this weekend. Just I promise you I'll be working on it this weekend. It'll just depend on how quickly Amazon gets back to me on the OKs. I checked a couple categories that I sell in, and I guess that's not probably practical for most people, so I did send in some items that would be more um, accessible, I guess, to everybody else. It, it does work, though. There are some glitches. You do sometimes have to go in and tweak a listing or something, too. Um, I had one that wasn't quite right the other day, so I'd like to have it straight before I do anything with it. Uh, Barlight Broker, thanks. Yeah, maybe it is on somebody's end. I'm not sure how that would work into there, either. Thank you, Annie. Jeffrey D., how are you doing this evening? Well, glad to have you, Eduardo, as well. I got Steve Elmore right down there below. How are you doing? Today has been a very nice day, I have to say. I got actual studio lighting in today. First time ever buying, you know, studio lighting. It's a tri-set um, LEDs, uh, full-color RGB barn doors, big tubular construction. It's a real, real nice set. I hope it really improves. Now, the video today doesn't look so spiffy. I have to probably play with the temps and the coloring. And I mean, it, you can turn them into like every little color in the book. It's got like presets that do all kinds of stuff. Digital display, they can be controlled from your phone and everything you could imagine. Um, Maui Delights, good evening, good evening. Welcome back in. Uh... Worst GDP ever for the USA. Probably so, I would say. CDL picker. My selling app changed The Shipping and rules has changed. It's so difficult to figure out. If you're talking about like eBay's um, phone app, I'm not one to list through that or do anything on the phone app. I'm literally a, a laptop person. We've got laptops all over the place. Um, I'm not a big phone fan at all. I use it because I have to. Uh, mostly for contacts and stuff, but 
I had two windows open. Okay, Daryl, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Hit the like button. Yes, if you have not hit the like button, you are enjoying the conversation. We'll go back into the buyer searches as well. I really wished almost that we could take like a petition to get that stopped just because I don't think they have a clue on what it's actually doing to those folks who are new or don't have a clue on how the category search works. And I'm sure, as eBay is saying, there's more people on now than ever before. There's more people now on ever before that don't know how that works. So they're losing out on people's items. Stunlin Law 1, hey, how are you doing this evening? Uh, PayPal back up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not upset with PayPal. I've I haven't had any bad experience. I remember back in the olden days when you had to sign up for them. It was a nuisance when you first signed up, and they were holding funds and all that stuff. I think they still hold funds. Like if you're just new starting off on eBay, I don't even know how that works on the new for those just starting off. But back in the day, they used to hold your fund. Well, back in the day, they didn't hold funds, and then they started holding funds. Um, until you'd been there a while. And then after a while, if I remember right, they used to hold your funds for so many days. or, And then I heard that they held them to the item was shipped. And then I heard they were holding them until um, uh, it arrived and all this other stuff until you'd been on the site for so many days or so many months or something like that. Hey, Regina, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you in the house as well. Wouldn't let you log in with bank on eBay site. Wow. Well, that's a bummer. Definitely so. That was easy for me. I mean, I try. I think I ended up, I had to do it like twice too, but it did go in. I think I tried it from, um, I don't think I used Chrome when I did it. I think Chrome, it wouldn't work or something like that. Uh, hey, Aaron, how you doing this evening? Good to see you in house as well. Good, sir. Jed, how are you doing? You can send a picture of a voided check for verification. There you go. So you can send a picture of a voided check. A lot of people may not have voided checks, though, would be the only other thing I would say. Uh, let's see here. How do you pay shipping with managed payments, Bob? Um, I just pay with PayPal still, as I said. PayPal is still my preferred choice. Now, you have a couple of options. There's two radio buttons there that you can click on to um, figure out which way you want to do it. I just keep it with PayPal. I don't really care where the money comes out of. You know, We always keep money in PayPal either way it goes. So, you know, I've got monthly uh, streams that come in from other sites we mess with too. So there's never a shortage on PayPal for at least shipping, I should say. Isaac Dow, uh, well, hang on, let me not miss anybody. Do they take the money back out of your bank account? You can do that too, I do believe. Again, I haven't looked at the other options. I just left it at PayPal. I'm not really concerned. Do not trust eBay. Just the things we know of are only the icing on the cake. Well, I'm sure that's for any company would be my my consideration with that. Um, you know, you've got to have a business partner. I don't know what else to do with that situation. Yeah, I'm not too fond of the information. My bank, the cards I use, will cover any business losses. I have insurance for a reason, so I have a BOP. So if there is a loss due to eBay's negligence, I can go after eBay. If for some reason I can't get it off eBay, my BOP would cover the financial losses as well, too. So, you know, I cover myself the best I can. The BOP, I do have, uh, like, uh, identity theft you know, coverage and things like that on it, too just because it's prevalent these days in society, you know. Cornelius, how you doing this evening? Good to see you in as well. Um, my personal opinion for those who haven't signed up, if you, you get the offer, I would just do it so you know it's going to work before fourth quarter rolls in. I would never want to do anything fourth quarter in my book if I could avoid it. You should only be worrying about fourth quarter sales and what's going on there instead of having to worry about managed payments and everything else. You know, and as I said, the, the conversation here, we are in managed payments. I have not had a single issue, even from the, the night. It, it rolled over on the 27th, the middle of the night. It was it originally, I think, said the 30th, and then uh, we got a notice saying it's confirmed for the 27th. Uh, so in the morning of the 28th, everything was normal. There was no difference, nothing concernable whatsoever, other than when I went to print labels, 
that I had to select. Why well, didn't you have to do that? Because it automatically kept me in PayPal, and I just kept it that way. But there was other radio buttons, meaning that there was other options that you could do to pay, manage payments. Um, we use a charge card on one of them, if I'm not mistaken, on the other account. It's just already set up, so it's just hitting a button. And maybe I'll go back in and, and verify what the other one is. I don't pay much attention once it's been put in, I guess I should say. Um, 210 people, 80 likes. I'd love to get up to 100 if we can. So if you haven't hit the like button, please pop that like button. It does show love for the channel. Again, I'm looking at another laptop here because I can never seem to get a chat feed on the same PC laptop that I am broadcasting from. Again, I do have a new laptop uh, being put together. Well, it's we've had some issues. It's going to be here any day now. Uh, managed payment starts for everyone in stages. So the next group I was under the impression is going to be activated in December. Um, in fact, I've had some people tell me they're being activated in August. So maybe they're doing a month rollout. Every month there's a new group maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but the last person told me that they have an August uh, specified August date, like the 7th or something like that. So again, I know there's some that were told they were going to be in December, the end of the year. So they're doing them in stages. Um, Isaac, you, if you've signed up for it, you will get tons of notices, I assure you. They've been calling our house saying, time to sign up if you don't sign up. And again, we're already signed up and it's already even started. The phone calls did stop on the morning of the 27th. Uh, but they were calling our house. They were, um, we had emails too on the same thing. So don't chunk your, your eBay emails. I would, you know, make sure you're checking everything out. We don't usually check these days emails from eBay in eBay anymore because I like to keep external copies too. So pretty much everything we do on eBay these days is running through InkFrog or some other app that we use. Uh, how are you doing, D? D Comley? Alec Trebek, good to have you in here. I've been in managed payments for over a year without issue. See, a perfect example, as I said, they've been doing it for over a year. Last year, they started managed payments. However, this week, my payments and balance have both continued to show negative no matter how much I make in sales, plus other issues. I, I can't say I've had an issue yet at all in, in my case. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not worried at this point. I'm going to compare the numbers every day of the week as they come in and verify the, the charges, verify what goes to my bank, and verify the fees. And I've been comparing the fees from how it was before with the PayPal fee and the eBay fee versus now with just the eBay fee. Again, as I said, I'll still be paying the way it looks. I'll probably be paying a few cents more overall. So it could add up at the end of the year. But if they're going to give away, continually give away 50,000, 75,000 free listings for an indefinite period of time, I'll be happy with the change. At least I'm getting something for the extra money. It's saving me listing fees because I'm not paying the listing fees for items over 10,000 listings. The anchor store we have gives us 10,000 listings for $299.95 or whatever it equates out to. Anything over that I pay five cents for. So if I'm paying for 30, 40,000 extra listings at five cents a pop, it adds up. So I'm saving money right now. So I really can't complain in, in all honesty. Uh, Barlight Broker, the mobile app is a joke. Yeah, I, I don't use mobile apps just for that reason. They're deficient in many features. Um, they're not feature complete. It doesn't have every feature that it should. It's basically like an API, like a channel off of Shopify, the phone app in my, my book. Because eBay's API, their channel with Shopify, the free one they give you, is awful. You can't do um, Best Offer. I use Best Offer daily. I would be you know, dead in the water without Best Offer. I'd have to restructure the entire business that we're working on, and that would be insane to have to do that. Let's see where we're at. Book Retro Barn Australia. Good day from Sydney. Well, welcome, welcome. You're still on PayPal. I don't. I don't. I've never had a problem with PayPal, so I don't mind. I wouldn't mind sticking with PayPal. It doesn't bother me at all. Prawns, not shrimp. There are prawns and there are shrimp. They're two technically different uh, species or animals, from what I understand. Dirt road picker, how are you doing, Peter? What happens when they go to uh, voice search? Sorry, find me a vintage button. 
no idea on that. Um, but, you know, we're on Amazon with stuff, too. So if you're on Amazon, you can still search for those same items. I would imagine that, you know, even on Amazon, the searches I do do in some cases center in on specific areas. And it only shows certain results, obviously. You know, sometimes it's hard to find your own items on Amazon if you've ever looked for them uh, without centering in on some category. So Amazon's a different beast, though eBay doesn't need to do something like centering in on specific categories for items, especially when they're lost on what the, the results are on that. They're, they don't, I, I really don't think they, they realize they're keeping people out of search results in that manner. I think they're blind on the whole aspect of it. I don't think the people who do the IT are sellers and understand you know, what that means. Nor are they collectors. You've got to be a seller, a collector, a regular buyer, a small seller, a big seller, all at once to understand the needs of all different types of people. And they have nobody, from what I can see, at eBay that, that knows about that. Now, I've had a couple people reach out and say they were invited to eBay Council. eBay Council's been around for like eight years or something like that, if I remember right. I want to say we got something years back on it. Never messed with it. But it's just like a input, supposedly, from uh, sellers and I, I, I doubt you'll even be able to find a link to it because I think it's some like internal thing they do. Um, but they've had it for all these years, and I don't see anything helping from that. They still do whatever they want. So, you know, I still do some of the surveys. I'm still in the, uh, what's that, eBay? Jeez, I'm in a program they have where they, they do surveys. Now, I know it's given them some information, but at least I get to kind of get an idea on stuff that's coming out. In some cases, they'll show you screenshots of what eBay may look like if they you know, roll out a certain feature or something. So I enjoy being able to see that again. So uh, let's see where we at. Well, beloved Dub Dub, how are you doing this evening? I have a very nice house, yeah. You've seen this house before. Uh, Rick, how are you doing, Rick? Just bought my best purchase ever stamp collection from a man named David Ward Steinman and Father Irving Ward Steinman. Serious postal collector spends 72 hours straight separating into categories. Well, good for you. That would be something fun for me. I would probably be up still looking through those two, like with the buttons. I mean, people think, you know, you're stupid. That who's going to buy all this button? Who buys stuff like that? Who buys stamps? Who buys coins? Who buys action figures? Who buys a specific brand of clothing? Who buys so, the specific type of coffee? There's a person who collects pretty much anything in the in the globe. C uh, buttons have multi-category interests. So if it's a button from a certain branch, a certain state, a certain country, certain airline, a certain this, certain railroad, there's collectors for everything. There's historical people that would be buying them from a historical section of button collectors who buy them from the button section. One button could have like four different uh, categories, like a campaign button from like, you know, long live the president, a George Washington commemorative or Blaine running for, for office or something like that. Benjamin Harrison. There's buttons for all of that stuff. There's a button for everything. You name it, there's a button for it. NBC TV stations, there's buttons for that. Disney World, they had specific buttons from the, in fact, I have some around here somewhere, that the uniforms had on them. The the ones who directed people around, the train system on there, the, the people who worked on the trains had specific Walt Disney World buttons, shirt buttons I'm talking about. And I used to get 15, 20 bucks for those back then left and right so whenever i saw them laying on the floor in the the changing room or the break rooms or anything else i always picked them up because it was a good 15 20 bucks every time somebody lost a button at disney one of those buttons and it's a nice solid brass button it has the magic kingdom the castle on it, and the whole works it's even in my my uh railroad button book disney's buttons in there because they use the same button at in california or wherever they have them at everybody had a button people don't realize how prevalent they are, even an individual building, even to this day, still have buttons. Every hotel had a button. Every motel pretty much had a button. Gas stations, Texaco, the, the captains and all the crew on the steamers that bring over the oil. Tr uh, truck drivers back then had them. Delivery drivers, post office. Everybody had a button on their uniform. Every group, every private organization. There's, there's more buttons than you would ever imagine, and there's a lot of money in it. Buttons can sell for four, five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars for a single button. And it, crazy as that sounds, just like stamps, some of the highest-priced items ever sold in history have been some stamps. 
you know, and I do have a fond affiliation for stamps. I do like stamps. They're like works of art. Um, they're interesting. They're unique. They take up a little space and they can sell for a lot of money. So, you know, I try to stay to the smaller items. Um, so, you know, I've built up a, 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 a name, I guess, for a buyer of certain things. So when certain things come up in certain areas in, you know, a three or four state area, I'm usually uh, heard, you know, my name comes up just because I buy a lot of stuff. So, you know, a lot of people can't afford to sink nine, ten thousand dollars in the shirt buttons and not list them right away. So who, who, who are you going to call, I guess, is the point. You, you're going to get a reputation. That's another question I get a lot is how do you get pickers? How do you get people that call you? I've done it for a while. I always have the cash. I'm always there on time or early. I never stand them up. I always give them something. I always buy at least something if I go to them. And the other people just aren't responsible enough to do that every time. You, just, you stand up somebody for a little while and they're going to come to me. You know, your loss is my gain. And that's usually what happens. And, and you know, a lot of the ones I have found, I found from Craigslist, um, or flea markets especially. I, I fit right in a flea market. I know the business. I, I used to set up at flea markets. I used to set up at Mount Dora as a vendor, Mount Dora, Florida, as a vendor on the antique uh, flea markets on Monday mornings. Used to have to be out there at 4 in the morning. So I'd go to bed like 2.30. Well, I'd, I'd get up like 2.30, 3 o'clock. I'd get deloaded, and then I'd be there by like 4 with the flashlight to set up and get my booth or if I was parking out there. I'm sure there's some folks who know uh, Mount Dora. Carl, and there's probably a few others. Hey, Rich, how are you doing? Mr. Sanders is in the house, too. And right below, Rich, is Cindy. How are you doing, Cindy? Lost power. Yeah, I always hate losing power. I do have a generator, as I said before, and we do have a backup. The we I've got electrical, like a charger for the car. So if my battery always it, it goes dead... I can just click it on there, and it literally starts up instantly. I don't know how much juice it is, but it runs a TV for hours on its own if I want to. And I've got a couple of those, as well as a generator. So I can just charge those with the generator and then use those so I don't have to hear the noise or waste a bunch of gas. So I can charge a couple of those at once and then run lights if I need to, too. Plus, I have an inverter for the car. If you ever, if you ever want to still be able to run like a laptop or a TV or something, buy yourself an inverter. The inverter... It like almost turns your your cigarette lighter uh, plug into your uh, like a little generator. Your car will be running and it will be uh, turning a regular uh, power to your house to whatever you got plugged into that. Uh, I always I always live by the inverter until we got these big bank things made for the cars for for jumping a car battery. And we've jumped the uh, since I don't drive very much. The car sits and we drive short distances. Doesn't have enough time to charge the battery so. You know, I've had to jump it quite a few times, so we started to take drives and stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Corn Fed 420, how are you doing this evening? Well, thank you very kindly, Corn Fed 420. Southern Note, I'm really careful about the categories and item specifics. I list only from the computer now. The phone app is glitchy and won't show all the listing options or changes things arbitrarily yeah i've heard that as well too now i did have some listings that they added in um like accept best offer for a certain range which i didn't add in there and i'm like why is that in there i don't know what the heck was up with that but i changed them and fixed it Futures pass, I search for value by antique sleepers and choose all categories. I find some rare stuff for cheap because I don't let eBay pick my categories for me. I never, I hate that eBay picks the categories. I, I think right now that's my biggest tick off with eBay. The, the complete incompetence of them to do that. It, it's, it's insane to do it. Anybody looking for something is going to look for all categories and newest first. That, that's what anybody who's intelligent enough to, to, who does this, I'm not saying intelligent enough, I shouldn't say it that way, who's into this, I guess, heavy. I search for weebles all the time. I search for other things all the time that we collect or I keep or for other people. I, I do the same thing every time. Newest first, always. All categories, always. People don't know what category to list stuff in. You know, uh, Germer Martinez, mailman is not scanning my packages, but they are being delivered without scanning, but late. 
I would do a master scan sheet and have them scan it when they pick it up. I wouldn't turn it over to them until they scan that sheet. It's one scan for every package you have if you print that um, at the same time. And that should solve that. I haven't had any issues using a master scan sheet. Ursula Odom, what happens with sales of currency collectibles? and managed payments, they shut them down. They were all ended and told they were, excuse me, pulled. Every one of them. I had a, a whole mailbox just full of pages and pages of that sort of thing. Um, it was really kind of annoying, in all honesty. Hang on just a second here. Uh, I'm sorry, I just had something come in. We just sent out a whole bunch of uh, offers to watchers just before the show, so I've got a whole bunch of sales coming in. My sales are up since managed payments took over. You know, I, I, I think, honestly, in fourth quarter, it will help your sales just because there'll be other options. It won't just be someone who's forced to, um, you know, go in and get a PayPal account because a lot of people don't like PayPal, those who haven't used it recently and things like that. From literally my personal opinion is that it will help fourth quarter, It'll give you more options. I think eBay is going to be pushing and, you know, pushing the ones that were in managed payment first over any other listings. If they're going to give any preference, they're going to give them to managed payments first. You know how eBay is. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but my personal opinion is that's what they're going to do. So for those not in managed payments, your views might not be as much as the managed payments folks because eBay is getting more money off of it. It's a business decision. They're going to want the ones that are in managed payments to sell their items first. Because they get a huge chunk that instead of just getting a set percentage of it, they're going to get the processing fee on top of it for it. So they'll get more money from the ones that sell through managed payments. That's my opinion. I, 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 eBay has never done anything the right way or you know what, what should be right for us. So I'm assuming that's what they're going to do. Take it how you want, but that's my opinion on that one. I don't think they're going to look out for our well-being in that one. They're only going to be pushing the ones that will make them the most money. I, I've listened to their you know, CFOs and stuff talk about, you know, how financials are doing. I, I follow those. I, you know, read Wall Street Journal and the whole works, and, and that's what they do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, another reason not to do auctions with most items. If you don't choose listing specific carefully, the item won't get to the audience and sellers lose money. I, I'm doing auctions now, and I've, I brought this up a little bit before, but right now we've been selling stuff that's been up for a couple of years. I've been putting stuff on. We, we've got a certain plan. We, we price it at a certain way. Most people are in Patreon, or most people who have been following me here on YouTube for a while know how I price the vintage papers and stuff like that. So I'll put something up really high. It'll be up for a little while, and then I drop it down to a certain... Let's say I started off at fifty-seven fifty, and I sell dozens of them at the high price, fifty-seven fifty, whatever it is. It doesn't matter, a widget. And then if it starts to slow down, where I'm only selling one here, one there at the full price, and all the rest are offers, I'll drop down the price down to thirty-four fifty. And we're talking five, six, seven months down the road is when I do something like that. I get that kind of question. So... I'll drop it down at that point, thirty-four fifty, and it'll run for a year or better on a lot of things. After say two, two and a half years in, and again, I can track all that. eBay does help you with tracking those if you wish to too. But I keep my own personal data on it, and then I'll at that point start blowing some out. I, I get a thousand free auctions with our um, anchor store per store, so that's a couple thousand listings I can do that are just thrown in there. So what we do is we'll we'll take some of those items that have been up instead of marking them down. I list them on eBay for the basic bottom line price that I want to get. Now, um, photographs. We're, we're talking about photographs here. I've been selling, geez, a lot of a lot of 8x10 military and movie ones. I dropped them into $9.99 at this point. Now, I have nothing into these. Uh, we've made the last photo purchased, 8x10 military plane photos. I may have spent $360. bucks. we have now hit the $5,700 mark out of that investment. No lie. That's that's the return on the investment, and I still have a couple thousand photos. So at this point, you know, every time one sells after fees and, and taxes, I'm making like $875 for every one. And what happens is I sell right this very second. I have some up on auction. Somebody bid on 23 of them, just one person. So one person is buying 23 on their own. Last week, again, I run these week to week. So there's, I'm running three three sets. It's a 10-day auction is what I'm running. So I have three of these I run, and I run 333 auctions 
per store at that. So that's my thousand free listings. So when some sells, I pull some more from there and I dump them to the 999 category, 999 price. And I'm, every single week I've done this, I've sold, a, I mean, a ton of them, a couple hundred dollars every single week. This is all extra money. It's just stuff that's sitting there. And on top of that, we're still selling some of the ones at uh, 3450. Now I'm going to drop them down to 2750 here shortly, or 2450. I'm not sure which, and then still dumping enough to fill up that 333 listings. Again, that's three times a month. I do 333 auctions. When they run out, I go down below 330. I fill it back up with more of those photos. And, and, and I'm telling you, man, they just sell like mad. That kind of thing. I can do that with anything. Buttons. If I did that with buttons, I'll do the same philosophy. Postcards. 5750 up for so many months, drop it down to 3450 up for so many months, drop it down again. You know, some items I just keep them up a little higher if there's something that should potentially sell. And then I wait for the offers to watchers as well. I mean, sales wise, if you play eBay, you figure out what works best for you, your own business. It's a win game. That's again why I said I'm not going to drop off eBay just because of managed payments. Now, I'm not saying they could do something tomorrow and I won't like it and I'll be done with them, but it's profitable. It's very profitable, and you know I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not. I'm not the bad person here. The people running eBay were the people, and maybe still are. We don't know. I don't trust the guy running it now, as I've said many times. Um, Peter, Facebook could dominate if they take over TikTok and TikTok it banned and then decide they want to take over eBay traffic. Yeah, I don't I don't pay much attention or worry about what like Warren Buffett does. I, I know people follow follow him. Nothing wrong with that at all. I'm just I'm I stock market to me is just just a game for a certain group. I'm I have stocks but I'm not a big follower on the stock markets in that aspect of it. You know, I'm not going to invest in Amazon in the first place just personally. I do have some eBay stock but um, yeah, Barlight Broker. That is that is true, and that changed since the pandemic as well, as we do know, because it kind of changed the demographics of who's online purchasing to begin with. Those numbers don't scare me because you're so forty percent of online markets Amazon forty percent. Probably 39% of that is stuff I don't sell in the first place. That other maybe 1% is stuff that would go on eBay and Amazon. So for what I saw, again, I'm on vintage. I'm not selling all the new stuff that a lot of other people does. I, I mean, I do do new NOS, FBA. We do media and vintage toys and stuff on Amazon. Historical collectibles, Victorian and all that on there too. But those categories still do better on eBay, most of them. Some don't. Some do better on, on Amazon though. Bluegrass Picker, how are you doing this evening? Ray's Forgotten Treasures. Just don't forget your treasures. Let's see who else is here. Robert, how are you doing? How many millions did eBay sell in silver this week? There were more sold listings than active listings. That one day was crazy. Yeah, everybody's banking on silver, too. I did see some of that, too. We have a bunch of silver here. Selva, how are you doing? Monterey, huh? Just sold a postcard from Monterey like two days ago. Businesses where a billionaire will sell its own country out over money. You know, money money is the root of all evil, they always say, and, and there's too many people that just care about money and nothing else. I, I honestly, if somebody could read my mind, you'd realize that I really seriously... It's not the money. I, I, I can swear as, as much as I can that that's the truth. People won't believe it, but it is the truth. I, I don't really care the freedom. I'm, I'm telling you, the, the, the waking up and doing whatever you want, anytime you want, is just, it's life-changing. It changes your worrisome rate. It changes how you feel about you know the future, the environment, and all kinds of other things, just in general, because you're not confined. You're not trapped in a job that's mostly dead end for most people, including some of the jobs that I had. So it, it's nothing more than freedom. And I don't care what anybody tells you. For me, that's what it is. I'm not rushing out. I'm not, I got a Patreon page. Everybody probably knows that. I'm not trying to hide that. I don't, I'm not looking just to skank, 
just crank out some money from people. I'm not looking to sell you a course that I can just pop out there and not have to do anything for it. I, 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 I'm here, and if I'm going to give you a service that's going to be helpful, and it's not just going to be based on money or anything. I'm not into that. I don't, doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. Making a whole bunch of money and not being happy or having time to spend it or being able to be free to do what you want is not going to mean much. I made a lot of money when we worked in D.C., but I had no freedom. I couldn't spend it. So what did it matter? What did it matter that I was making so much money and I didn't see my family? It didn't matter to me anymore. I didn't care about the money. And now, on the other hand of the, 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 the spectrum here, I'm making way over what I was then, and I got the time to do whatever I want now. And I'm doing it all on my own. I don't have anybody I have to report to. I don't have anybody I've got to worry about. Now, I know you got to pay eBay fees, but nothing's free. There's no free rides. So whatever you do, you're putting money into it. You're investing something. If you're working for somebody else, you got a car, you got to buy clothing, you got to eat while you're there, and all this other stuff, you've got to give the time up. So it's, it's a totally different atmosphere. Hustle and Grind Kagura. I love eBay. The site makes me money. I have no issues, no major ones anyway, with them. They are incompetent, though. They are 100% incompetent, stuff like that. <clears throat> the search results alone are, are going to... I'm never going to stop until they, they change that, calling that out. It, it's it's to the point... I put that video out. I know there's still a lot of people I haven't seen. There's still a lot of people say, you know, that's stupid. You know, I got a lot of thumbs down on it. Those The people thumbing down that don't realize that literally that is the first uh, search somebody's going to see. And if you're not in that one specific category, they're not going to see you possibly. That's huge. There's probably more people that aren't seeing your item because of that search than because of Adblocker. And Adblocker was more than enough to convince me that that was wrong and shouldn't happen in the first place. You're upping the level to a much higher percentage of people that may not see it because of those search results alone. And again, I don't think eBay said let's put something up in with the ad blocker. I don't think they had a clue that ad blocker would block it. I think they were just rolling on. They didn't put two and two together. I'm not saying another company didn't wouldn't have come up with that same issue or not, but I don't think they thought of it. I don't think they have a clue on the search results here. If they asked me, I would show them the facts that people are missing that. They can call anybody out there can call, have some friends, give them a, a category or, or give them an item to look up on eBay. And have them tell you how many items they can find on that category. How many items does eBay show them? Are there any more? Ask them. They're going to, most, the majority of the people, especially if they're on their phone, are going to give you the narrowed single category totals. And that's why I can say I tested this. I, I reached out to a bunch of people. And I got the same results pretty much every time I did it, which is I asked a couple different categories. So I didn't just try to pinhole eBay on something, but it, it's it's a fact. There's a lot of people not seeing your item because of the category you may put it in. If it's not in the one they say it should be in, and again, they're wrong on a bunch of those categories, especially the vintage and collectibles. Just because maybe dollar-wise more sells in one category doesn't necessarily mean it's that same item that's selling. Again, I put stuff in different categories all the time because I get more money in other categories. They're They're limiting my ability to do that and forcing me to go into categories that are more flooded than other ones when I don't need to, other than the fact that they're centering in the search to where they think it should be. Not the people who use that search. They don't use that search. They're trying to give you what they think is the best search. They should ask the people who are searching what would help them. And what would help most people is an all-category, newest first. That's what Everybody I know, that's what they're going to look for. Everybody who collects what I, what I have, it's mostly the new stuff. That's why... Three to five percent of everything I list that day, the day I list it, sells because there are people looking for what just went up. I mean, it's it's a fact. There, it's it's insane that they're that incompetent that they can't get that. They're hurting the new people that are coming on and selling who don't realize that, and they're hurting the buyers who don't realize that a bunch of stuff is hidden. So it's not just hurting us; it's hurting the buyers too because they're not going to see everything. They could miss something that they really wanted. They may have spent more on something than someone else. They just didn't see it. It's it's annoying to me that it's 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 idiotic that they would do that and limit the search. And I, I know again, I know some of it's been going on for a while, but it's been taken to a drastic level. Type in chainsaw. It's going to only take you to chainsaw. There are people that collect vintage chainsaws. They're only going to be shown brand new ones in the lawn and garden section. I mean, it's insane. There's other things, 
advertisements for chainsaw. If somebody's looking for an advertisement for a chainsaw, they may just type in chainsaw, newest first, and center in from there. I mean, it's, it's just crazy the way they got it going. Uh, hang on, I just it just bounced for just a second here. Uh, yep, here, uh, Gimbal, yep, here in UK, we are nowhere near everyone switching to managed payments yet. It's going to take a while. Yep. Yeah, again, 2021 is what they're projecting for everybody being on it here in this country. Yeah, you can't fight it at all. I mean, there's nothing we can do. Yes, Nina's vintage. Yes, cashmere. That's what it was. Cashmere, if you're talking about George. Uh, Book Retro Barn Australia. Yes, cashmere. That's got to be the one. Thank you again, Carl, for that super chat. I do appreciate that. eBay is better than Amazon, in my opinion. I hate stock photos. Technically, you're not supposed to use stock photos. It has to be the photo of the item you're you're showing in Amazon as well. But there's so many people that are using drop shipping, and still they're still drop shipping on eBay as well too. That's the problem. There's so many foreigners that will list the same items with different manufacturer names, so they can have backup accounts and all kinds of things like that too. I mean, some of the items that you buy off of Amazon. All they got to do is slap a different sticker on it at the manufacturing place. They may have six different accounts, six different prices, but it's the exact same item, literally down to the T. And like when I was looking for lighting, perfect example. I ran into all kinds of copies. Some of them were very obviously the, the advertising photos in those separate listings were all the same. They were new listings, mind you, too. So, you know, I do run into that mostly on Amazon with stuff like that. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Yeah, things have been tight. Good to have you back in the house here. Oh, I hate solid white backgrounds because a seller can use low quality photos without notice. Not on Amazon, they cannot. You will get dinged on Amazon with the um, low quality photos. I've had some knocked off. They weren't put in active just because of the photo quality. I've played around. And the other thing with white backgrounds with it, too, 85% of the image has to be the item. So it's got to be bright. You know, if they're using low-quality photos, it's their loss. They'll buy it over you in the first place either way, in my book, anyway. We're going for quality of photos with, you know, Shopify and all that. I'm not worrying about any of the glitz, the glamour, any, like, page, fancy page layouts. I'm going for quality of photo. All the time, energy, and efforts is going into the best darn photo if it means everything is scanned in a flatbed and we have to use a lot more photos, the stuff sells better. It, it just does. I don't. There's no other way around it. We've done tests now, and I've been talking about some of the items we've been selling. We've been flatbed scanning, like scraps and label, everything. Anything we can do, we flatbed scan or, or we'll duplex scan on the Epson 510. The quality is horrendously improved, and the sales improved, and all the listings that have that, the scans like that. So. You know, I, I, I'm happy with the white background, again, because then they're universally accepted if it's a white background, too. If I make every listing to the standards of eBay, or of uh, Amazon, I can list those listings on any site without any issue. eBay is going that route now. I don't think it's, it's, it's uh, in question at this point, especially with the app that they added with the white background and all. I really think that they're going to be pushing the same basic principles, all white, you know, a certain percentage background has to be this or that now it's not good on like jewelry and some items but you know they're going to do what they're going to do as we know can we still buy mystery seeds from china yeah i saw that article too on that peter warning them not to plant Uh, let's see here. I sell vitamins on Amazon FBA. They are fine with it. Sell them there. Yeah, there's. it depends on the vitamins. I've seen them take them down on Amazon. So, again, it just depends on the vitamins. Uh, eBay, I know for sure they took a bunch down. I, I had several people tell me. I did look at what they were selling. I did see some ended listings and all, too. So, uh, Let's see here. Anytime, Eduardo. You can just pop another response if you had some more questions on that, too. Lee Pope, how are you doing? From Iowa, huh? Thrifty Falconer's wife. 
Alabama. Now we we used to go to the flea market in Montgomery, that big one down in Montgomery. Uh, my sister went to college there too, so. Uh, thank you, David and LV. Is my feed like way off? Let me try and catch up here so we can get some more questions. Give me a second here. My feed's all over sometimes, but it's much better having the two laptops. Uh, let's see here. Uh, BBO647, welcome. Southern Note, no school. Uh, let's see here. Joe Pace, hello from Pinellas County. Moved here from Ohio 15 years ago. Been through all over in Pinellas County. We lived in Florida for 10 years. Jed, a lot of meth in Clearwater. That I would bet surprising. It was nice when we were around. That's again, that's back into the nineties. Hey, Black Crystal Dice, how are you doing this evening? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Annie's got her channel in there too. If you want to check out Annie's channel, she's got a lot of videos. Uh, let's see here. Lima, I go to Lima once in a while. Lakeland. Yeah, we used to have a friend in Lakeland, too. We lived in Claremont, uh, Mineola, actually. If anybody knows where Mineola is, it's right near Claremont. It's just on the outskirts. It's just down 27, like a couple miles. There used to be a really killer little tiny thrift store. Not really, like a secondhand shop. And I used to be able to get military there. I got scrap gold and everything. I mean, it was the bomb. It was right on the corner of 27 and I think the main where the post office was, if I'm not mistaken. It's just on a little tiny strip place. By the end of 2021, everybody will have their own website. I think a lot of people are hesitant on that whole step, in all honesty. Uh, let's see here. Just got here. I'm very confused about managed payments. I do not understand exactly everything about it. Um, it's just another way to process. eBay will be cutting out PayPal and just doing the same thing PayPal used to do. That's that's basically all managed payments is. It's a money grab for eBay, though, because they're going to get all the profits instead of sharing them with PayPal. Uh, let's see here. Jackass Retro. I mean, managed payments is fine. I had my slow sales day in months on my first day and haven't had any money hit my account yet. That's not good. It doesn't mean, though, they don't correlate together, I should say, necessarily. Quanti There's so many other factors in there. Again, I've, I rolled into it, so I haven't seen any of those issues. We've got an uptick. Um, you know, it's hard to say. It's, it's just really hard to say what, what would be an issue on that. It could just be one of those things. The end of the month, a lot of people may not spend money, depending on the time of the month, too, until they pay their, their rent. That's what I see a lot, too. So come the third and fourth... If I am ever slow, that usually picks right back up and it's back to normal. I don't worry about a couple days. I have, you know, a monthly total I worry about. If the monthly's down, it's a different story. It, it almost always balances out where I'm up at the end of the month, two, three, four, five, ten percent, whatever it ends up being. At least that's my take on it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hang on a second here. I don't want to lose anybody. Oh, let's see here. I like to switch to manage payments, just Joe Pace, but eBay won't let me. They're doing it in stages. Just wait till they send you an invite would be my best guess on that. I have multiple items that sold and no payment received today. Buyers are saying there are issues that they can't pay. So far, I have nine like this today. Huh, Dr. Full. I have not seen it. Again, I, I can't, can't comment on it. I haven't seen it personally. We're getting payments. I just had one. I mean, when I just picked up my phone, there was two payments in there right now and three more sales. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how, what the issues may be, whether it's a banking issue or who knows what. BBO647 is on the waiting list. Joe Pay, same thing. Have you heard about managed payments from international accounts? Yes, they are on their way doing that now. How will they pay an international bank? Well, if they're doing managed payments and you're paying them to manage payments, they already have some direct links to international banks, I would imagine, anyway. Um, and plus, it's going. some of these are probably going through Apple Pay and you know all the other options that are available. Charge card straight. 
You know, because you, you can pay with a charge card. You don't need anything else other than your normal charge card. And it literally takes just a matter of moments. Um, I opened my PayPal account way back when they were giving people five to just to sign up. Yeah, I remember those days, too. Yeah, we were forced to use PayPal. eBay can deter, d determine how you get paid if you're using their platform. All they got to do is put it in the user agreement. It is a, again, it's a private platform. There is nothing that we can say that 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 can alter how they plan on doing their own business. It, there's nothing. It's not it's not deceitful or a lie in my book. They can do it any way they want. They didn't used to have have PayPal. They did have PayPal. They split from PayPal. They can change it any way they want. Again, it's their site. We have no control, nor is there any laws that say a private company has to do something a specific way. They can pay us however they want. They could pay us in pennies, you know, drop ship to your house once a month if they really, really wanted to, you know. Uh, I remember when PayPal had a money market account. I don't remember any of that. I never used PayPal for that. We were in the, the business credit union at that time, uh, Steel City uh, style. Voided checks are available to download on your online banking. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, I'm not sure on your insurance on that. I don't remember insurance on eBay. We've had a BOP, though, for like a decade, and it pretty much covers business losses on most things. BOP is a business owner's policy for those who are not familiar with it. I got like 250 people in, 121 likes. So if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that like button. It really helps the show out for us. Show some love if you haven't hit the button. Do you know how managed payments will be better for sellers? It'll give the people looking at your items a better chance to purchase it. So let's say someone's searching for an item in Chrome. And this is my take on it. And I've looked into this. I've talked to people. I, the whole. I mean, I've really looked into this stuff. I don't like to just play around. I want to know where my best uh, investment of time is, where, what's going to get me the most money. So I look into whatever I can on, on this kind of thing. For a seller, you get somebody who's doing the, that Chrome search for some random item. eBay gets a better result or something on there shows up in the very first page, first couple results. One of them's eBay. They go to eBay, never been on eBay before, but they want that item. They don't have PayPal. A lot of people don't want to sign up for PayPal. They have Apple Pay, though. They have a charge card. They can pay for it any way they want. They don't have to do anything else other than just go ahead and pay for it right then and there. If some people, like when somebody puts something in their cart, and then they realize they got to do PayPal, sometimes people will leave it and just abandon the cart because of issues like that. They're like, well, I don't want to sign up for PayPal. Just like people don't want to give, give eBay their information, when it comes time to check out, a lot of people don't want to give eBay their information. If they have a charge card or Apple Pay or something, they're just giving out that. They don't have to give any other information other than that payment form as a guest or any other way. So, you know, that's the, the, the draw on it for me. It, it's it's going to get people who wouldn't normally buy items on there buying them because they don't have to do anything else. A lot of people just hate, despise PayPal for whatever reason. I know back in the day there was issues of them randomly holding people's money and stuff like that. I've never experienced it, so I can't say either way. But I've seen people say stuff. I've heard people talk about it in the whole works as well, too. Uh, let's see here. Heck, I remember when you could bid on your own item. You could bid on your item on eBay against one of your own potential buyers. You could also take checks and cash wasn't a big ordeal and stuff like that. I used to get cash and envelopes. Uh, let's see here. Hopefully that makes sense, Zolo. Uh, let's see here. Did you talk about video title yet? I did go into manage payments and the search results, so and that's several times in here. Again, we are on managed payments. I have not had the issues that anybody's talking about. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't had any issues. It's just seamlessly rolled in without any any distracting factors. If anything, we are up right now in sales. Above and beyond what, you know, just me sending out a whole bunch of extra offers to watchers. Um, and again, the search results, as I've talked about a couple of times, I won't go back into that now, but the search results is, is like my biggest issue with you know, people not seeing your stuff. That search result alone is going to be the biggest factor in people not seeing listings. 
Yeah, I think Yvette's saying she's registered, but no notice of start date. I it, I want to say it took like two or three weeks for me to get the first letter saying it would be activated on such and such. I signed up, and then it even took a, a week or two just to get a notice on the bank account and the whole works. Yeah, here's Carl. First week in August. So that's another one that's telling me that like in the 7th of August range. I don't know if I just a rumor, but I heard seller fees might be coming uh, um, up per item at point of sale instead of a fee bill eventually. I'm not sure what that's meaning there, but eBay addicts, how are you doing this evening? Flipping goodies. August 12th, they will take fees out at time of sale. No more invoice for that. Yeah, your invoice will just be your monthly um, store fee. That's it. That's it, totally. That's why I said before, for those who are new to eBay, those who aren't familiar with keeping track and keeping track of your money and all that kind of stuff, it'll it'll save you because you won't have to worry. Your fee, at the end of the month, if you've got like a $50 store fee or whatever the smaller store fees are, that's all you got to pay. So you can't get yourself in trouble because it's giving you the money after they've taken out the majority of the fees. The majority of my fees our final value fees, it, it dwarfs the $300 I pay for listing fees. Final value fees and extra listing fees have been my biggest fees. Obviously now it's final value, but... Joe Cooncat, how are you doing? Good to hear that. Thank you very kindly. Ken Albright, I was promised entry in two weeks. We'll see. Either way, okay. If they're telling you you're going to be in, I, I would just take it to the bank with that and, and assume that's correct. Everybody should get a bank account either way. So for those who are not wanting to get a bank account and do all this and worrying about it being reported, at some point, every dime you make on there is already reported to some extent. You know, you can't hide income. I wouldn't recommend doing it. Just do it legal. If you're going to do this for a, a full-time business, now I, this is important, so pay. this is something you should think about. The more income you can register, the better off you're going to be for overall um, your own personal benefit, I should say. It, it'll prove, like, let's say you want a loan for something, and you're only reporting bare minimum, and you're kind of fudging your numbers, which I know a lot of people do. You shouldn't do that. It's going to report you making less income, so you're not going to get loan. They're not going to get loans. Not going to get this. You won't get business credit as easily. There's there's a lot of reasons why you want to report every dime you can. You know, at some point you'll get big enough. You can move up if you're just a sole proprietor to an LLC, and then from an LLC to an S corp would be your your hopeful. Hopefully, your goal should be to be an S corp where you pay yourself. And you can save a lot more money that way. You you want to grow your business. You want to advance through this structure. You want to get better at it and stuff. So jump on along the bandwagon and, and, and follow suit, I guess I should say. You're not you're not drinking the Kool-Aid or whatever everybody sells. You're, you're doing what's good for your business. You know, who cares what somebody thinks or says about managed payments in my book anymore? I'm making money. I'm making decent money. I can't complain. I, who's going to knock that kind of money off, you know? I can't, I don't have a problem. I mean, when you can sell a couple thousand dollars every single weekend on an average, just on the weekends, not counting the hundreds that go through the days on one individual account, I can't give that up. Anybody would be crazy to give that up. It'd be like winning the lottery and saying, I don't want the money. You know, it'd be the same principle. Uh, let's see here. Slide down just a little bit. Spiders of the world. You can do best offer in the app. And I've had other people tell me you can't, or it changes and adds best offer when you when you don't. You're talking about the phone app, I'm sure. I use um, the only reason I need best offer or Ink Frog is because it's not available in the API. Uh, let's see here, Joe. Let me slide down just a hair. Good evening to you too. Draclor, how do you find out what your change date is? They will email you once you sign up for it. Uh, EEC, do you think the USPS will go out of business? Will another carrier create their own first class shipping? 
I'm not really worried about the UPS or U.S. Uh, Post Service going out of business. We'd be a laughing stock to the whole world to be the only country without a national um, post office. I just think they should offer other services like banking for people. You know, it, it makes sense. Dual use it, and you can double the return from the same investment. Just like us having two businesses out of the same same business structure. I mean, it, it saves you money. It's, it's just a no-brainer in my book. Yeah, Ken Albright, um, Albrich, I'm sorry, CC, credit card versus PayPal on foreign purchase. Best to use credit card. PayPal nails twice currency conversion plus money spent percent. My credit card doesn't charge for currency conversions. I was talking to somebody just yesterday, the day before, about payments and that the fact that it's a lot higher as a foreigner or someone out of the U.S. Um, with PayPal. So if you're out of the country, you will have some higher fees on something like that without a doubt. Oh, hang on here. Just a second. Let me pop out of here. Hey, Dom. How's Dom doing this evening? Good to see you in here. If you're still in here, uh, this might have been from an hour ago for all I know. I know I talk a lot, but I do try to get to everybody's question. Hopefully Dom's doing well tonight. Thoughts on eBay support also being sellers on eBay. Conflict of interest? I don't... I wouldn't think that's a conflict of interest in my book. I mean, if they were someone in a position that would um, have sway in it, I think, honestly, it helps us because they know what we're talking about when we call. So in my opinion, it would be good. If I had employees, I would encourage them to sell. They'd probably take a little more pride into their job would be my take on it, too. Um, because again, they've got a stake in the company as a seller themselves. So I would think they'd want to give you the best answer. The ones I get the worst answers from are usually the ones who don't sell and don't know what I'm talking about. Um, most of the people on anchor support, again, I can call eBay any day I want. And I have been able to, there was only a two week time frame when it was iffy on whether I could actually call eBay until they rerouted the phone calls. There is still phone support and has been for months for Anchor Store and above, just FYI. So we can still call eBay. Uh, but I don't think it's a conflict of interest. I honestly think it's a good thing. Yeah, I don't know the, the, the lines of Sesame Street, no. I think I know how to get to Sesame Street, and that's about it. Fond memories, though, of watching it as a kid. Me and Dom like similar items, so I'm sure he's thinking similar thoughts. Just bought the vinyl record warehouse here in Florida. Um, let's see here. Yeah, hit the thumbs up if you haven't. I'm at 250 viewers, and we're at 134 likes. Do appreciate it, of course. Uh, Carl, I don't set up anymore, but the times I did were some of the best of my life. I even met some great friends. Yeah, I, I did like setting up back in the day. Uh, let's see here. I used to have a car cigarette lighter that would pop into the back seat when it got hot and, and ready. Yeah, that's what you're probably talking about, yeah. I remember that. You could pop it way in there and it would shoot out sometimes. If it hit the back floor and you had paper back there, you'd have a fire in the back seat with those. I don't know if they make those anymore. I have no idea. I don't know. Does my car, I don't even know if my car has one. I don't smoke or anything like that. So, Hey, Michelle, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you on. Richard Medora, thanks for everything you do for the reason. Well, thank you very kindly there, good sir. Crystal, where are we at? Uh, let me pop down. Just not friendly to smokers. Yeah, the post office is running behind. I've got a package, and the person has been very bo bothered by it um, that's been stuck since the 13th in Detroit. 
I, they they literally got like I was trying to be mad or mean to them or something by answering their question. If a package doesn't show up, I'm out that money and the package, not them. So I take these, I take a missing package very seriously. Uh, tomorrow, if I don't have a response from my investigation through the post office, I'm calling the postmaster in Detroit. I don't know how good it will do, but Detroit has my box and they still haven't sent it out. Doctor, for every one of my shipped items are delayed. I've had just a scant handful that are going the distance. And it seems that it's usually the smaller packages. The big packages seem to come through right away. It's the small little ones that seem to get hung up. Why do they just change the format for shipping on eBay for phones? I don't ship phones, and I don't ship for my phone, so I'm not sure on that aspect at Guero at all. Yeah, I'm not a, I hate phones, in all honesty. I'm not a big phone fan. Uh, keep getting error messages when I try to sign up for managed payments. I would give them a call if I was you. One little paper ended over 160 yesterday that I would have had listed at 27.50. I do list. If I don't know for sure, I'll probably put it up for an auction at least once or twice. I usually run it once, I'll relist it another time, so that'll be 20 days. And if I don't even get a comment or watchers or anything, I usually run into a like 3x uh, uh, thought and then let that go as a bin BO and see what happens from there. Forget it, put it up and forget about it. That's what I usually do at that point. Let's pop on down. Does anyone else feel complete when they get an even multiple of 100 on their feedback? I don't even look at my feedback. Um, I guess, you know, once you get so much, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I don't say I don't look at it. If it goes, if I get a negative or, or a, anything like that, I always dig into it right away. But I, it, I guess it's not a big concern after you hit a certain point anymore, I guess. Um, it's always good to have that number, of course. Uh, Mike Kala, after August 1st, can I downgrade from premium and basic store? 95% my items collectibles only need max 5,000 and basic store will allow 10,000. Um, I'll have to double check on that because I don't think the basic store was 10,000. I mean, anchor store is 10,000, but maybe I'm missing something here. Mr. Bizelot, how you doing there, Mr. Bizelot? Good to have you in the house. What do the blue wrenches mean? Steel City style. Those are moderators for the channel. People that we trust and that we allow to block or post or do things for the channel. Annie was the first one. Again, I called out Annie. She does have a channel on her own, but Annie was my first moderator ever. Um, Aaron was right up there too, if I'm not mistaken, too. Michelle's been a moderator for a very long time, at least a year, I want to say, maybe. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, let's see here. Well, thank you, TikTok. Appreciate it. Yeah, buys a lot. You got to buy a lot. Buying in bulk. I've said like 80, 85% of everything we buy comes in bulk. Everything. I don't, I'm done playing around. I see people doing the videos. I know everybody likes watching the videos and the sourcing trips and all that. Where are they making their money from? Are they making them from the videos or are they making them from the sourcing? I don't get that kind of stuff sourcing. I, I can't go and drive around hoping to find something. I love sourcing. I love going to flea markets. I love doing the garage sales. I love doing all that stuff everybody else does. But for me, we're we're I'm above doing that. Not like above it like it's below me because I love doing it. But I don't need to do it. And it's it's almost a detriment to my business because I don't usually find good stuff. So unless I want to just do videos, there's not much sense in me going and sourcing that way. I mean, my channel could be something different, but I source bulk. I am a bulk sourcer. Everything is bulk if I can get it that way. Buttons, postcards, trade cards, magazines, 8mm slides, photos, comics, toys, marbles, action figures. Um, I mean, just anything I get, I try to get in bulk. Puzzles, games, video games everything metal items 
letter openers, pens and pencils. You've seen me buy hundreds of pencils all at the same time and pens and things like that. Advertising brochures, everything is in bulk. Everything is in bulk. Your, your goal, in all honesty, should be to stop going to one-offs for business business wise now i know it's more fun to go but i would love to just be able to do it that way and make what i do now the minute i stopped doing all those random sourcing and i started to get into buying bulk i started to make a lot more money you know so i don't i don't do those the hauls like everybody else i don't need to i don't need to go out i just picked up thousands of records the other day i got to pick them all there was nobody around it was just here's the keys Call me when you're done, if, if you're going to be a while, blah, 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 somebody I know. So I didn't have to worry about it. That's the kind of haul that I do. I go somewhere, I pick up the stuff, and I come home. I'm a reseller. I'm not a, a, a videographer to some extent. Now, I'm, you're going to see some cool, I'm going to try to do some better videos, but, um, you know, that's a sideline. Um, where are we at? Yeah, I'm fine with managed payments. Michelle's saying the same thing here. Uh, let's see here. Let me pop down here. We'll get to some more questions. We're running down to the end here, it looks like. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. see here steel city style my flips have had a better return than my stocks except for tsla uh, anyone going to us 127 yard sale next week yeah, i used to do those things too again for me i'd rather just go to a picker i know everybody doesn't have pickers i keep saying that i don't want it to, to seem like you know I'm, I'm not thinking about everybody else your goal should not be to randomly drive around. I'm, I'm telling you, the ones, the people that are seem to be the most successful that I talk to, are doing wholesale and in so many other options, but they're not going just randomly unless they're just doing it for a video or something or for fun. There's nothing wrong with doing that either. But the point is, you, you need to move up to buying in bulk of some sort, finding a niche, finding a a purchase venue that you can keep getting the same thing over and over again. You need replenishables. You need something that you don't have to worry. If I had to go source around here, it would triple the amount of time I was away and had to do stuff. It would just triple it. It would just be horrendously awful because I'd be randomly driving around hoping to find something. Thrift stores are done. No good at that. Antique stores aren't so great because a lot of stuff is closed, so people aren't bringing in new stuff to the antique mall. There's a lot of sales right now, so... You know, I've went recently, and I'll probably show you some of that video, but I did go to Antique Mount Mask on and everything, and did okay. The prices were reasonable. A lot of stuff was on sale because they've been closed, and they're trying to recoup the losses they had from when their business was closed. So, you know, your, your goal, again, I'll say this one last time, your goal should be to avoid random sourcing. Avoid having to go from garage sale to garage sale hoping to find something. Now, you're going to find some good stuff here and there at a garage sale, but there's you can't guarantee what you're going to find. You can't guarantee you're going to make enough money to make it worth your while. Once you get the hookups, though, with, with specifics, I know if I go somewhere or I go to pick up something, I'm going to make money off of it. I know I'm going to have hundreds of things or a 1,000 of this or 5,000, 10,000 of the same item or 50,000 when it comes to, like, buttons or something, you know? Uh, let's pop on down here. Uh, let's see here. The love of money is the root of all evil. There is a big difference. Yes. Michelle, I found some silver dollars in a lot of what I thought were empty boxes. Turned out most were full of fancy stationery and won lots of silver. Well, good for you. Very good. Well, thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. There's, uh, there's other ones besides the 127. There's two or three. I mean, we had them all over the place. There's one around here, I think, even, too, uh, that goes for a long distance. Uh, thanks, TikTok. 
Uh, Daryl, you think with eBay being in California the birthplace of most of the computer tech that they would have better tech on their site? Yeah, you would think so. Poor management, poor decision for sure. Yeah, eBay has been behind, but it works. It's still a viable platform. If they wouldn't keep screwing and changing everything, it was probably better, even though it was you know, still dated to some extent in functionality before they started messing with it in my book. Sad to say, but that's what it seems to be. Uh, let's see here. Let me see what time it is. I'm not even paying attention here. Yeah, we're going to end it in just a minute here. I'm way past what I normally am. Anyone know if they are giving us the free listings in August like they have been? I, from what I saw, yes, they are. Oh, let's move on down here. Let's see if I can get to one more question before I head off here. Oh, there's Kathy. How are you doing, Kathy? Hopefully you scored some good stuff there. Yeah, I'll have to look at their updates too, Annie. I know somebody else told me. I, I saw them the other day, and I don't remember what it was because I've been just so occupied with Shopify and everything lately. Mr. Hot Wheels, hey, Chuck, how are you doing? Appreciate it very kindly. Yeah, it, I heard it was only for those switching to manage payments as well, too. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I thought that exact same thing. Oh, let's see, where are we at? My feed just bounced now on the other one. Yeah, I think I'm totally lost in the feed, so... Um... Yeah, I think we'll just end it here. I can't even tell where I'm at anymore. My feed just bounced again. I really honestly appreciate it coming on. If you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button for me. I will have another video up tomorrow here on YouTube. Um, Patreon, you will have one up still tonight. Uh, literally, it'll be up tonight before I go to bed, I promise you. I will probably, since I ran kind of late on the show, I will probably answer everybody's Patreon emails and stuff first thing in the morning. Um, I'm actually leaving the lights on today or up, so I will be finishing the last part of a couple other videos. So you will see some more coming up. I do have another uh, Weebles video coming up. It's going to be on the Haunted House. I do believe we'll put that one up next. Um, and then we are working on a Hanna-Barbera, how to identify the characters in another video. And then I have one on um, kind of tying in a history and stuff on buttons and things that will help you identify various other things that aren't just necessarily buttons. The same logos that you'll see on buttons they use on paper and collectibles of various different types. So I've got some, they're going to be more along the lines of Weebles videos, some of them. Um, I'm trying a few different things, trying to, to drum up as much interest and hopefully they're a little more fun. I know I'm a little droll. I hear a lot. Um, I like to have fun, but it doesn't show very much here because I'm kind of in my business mode. But um, we're going to try and, you know, liven things up a little bit in some of the videos, too. So those are coming down the line. Again, I do appreciate everybody coming on. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Again, if you haven't hit the like button, please pop that like button. I'm at around 260 people in-house and 151 likes. But we will end it there. Again, keep an eye out. Those in Patreon still tonight. Uh, Shopify video and some other stuff and then YouTube video tomorrow. But I thank you and I hope everybody has a good night.